Hello and welcome back to Manifolds, the video series where we talk about integration on generalized surfaces. And in today's part 43, I want to show you that the integral is well defined. This simply means it does not matter how we decompose the whole integral, we always get the same value out. However, before we start with the details for that, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube, or via other means. And please don't forget, being a supporter has advantages. For example, you can download PDF versions, books, and quizzes. Indeed, you can just click the link in the description to become a supporter and to find the additional material. Okay, then let's start by considering any smooth manifold M as always. And you know, in order to define the integral, we need an orientable manifold and a measurable set A. So this is the setup, and then we can talk about the integral of a volume form over such a set A. In fact, this is what we have discussed in the last video, the definition of the integral of omega. And as you might remember, it worked by decomposing the set A into smaller parts. And these parts are simply called A1, A2, and so on, and then we just have to consider a whole sum of integrals in the end. And please recall, we do this decomposition because each single set AI can be described by a single chart of the atlas. And indeed, if we have a single chart, we already know how to calculate the integral. However, now the problem is that such a decomposition might definitely work, but no one tells us which decomposition we should choose. Just imagine that someone tells you that he wants to calculate the integral over A with another decomposition. And in order to keep the notation clear, let's say that these sets are called A1 tilde, A2 tilde, and so on. Hence, now we can also calculate the whole sum with respect to these subsets. And now the question is, do we get the same result as before? And obviously we want to have that, so we will prove it in this video. Of course, only with this proof, the symbol on the left hand side makes sense, because there the decomposition is not mentioned at all. Therefore, I would say, let's formulate the whole claim with a proposition. In other words, this is the proposition that tells us that the integral is well defined. So first, we have to state all the ingredients we need for the integral definition. And since we have discussed that in the last video with all details, I would say we can keep it simple here. So first, we have a countable atlas UKHK of the manifold M. And with respect to this one, we can write A as a disjoint union. So in short, the set AK lies completely in the set UK. And there we just have to check that two things are satisfied. And the first one is that all the integrals over AK exist. You know what it means? If we translate this integral to Rn, then the integral over the absolute value exists. So it's finite. More precisely, we consider the component function of omega and everything with respect to the chart hk. And now the second requirement is that we can form the whole sum of these elements and we still get out a finite value. This means even if we have infinitely many elements, the series is still finite. And then you know, the whole integral of omega over a is just defined as this sum without the absolute value. Okay, so this was the first picture, and now we also assume that we have the second one. In other words, now we assume that we have a second atlas, u tilde m and h tilde m. So with respect to this new atlas, everything should look the same, so we have a decomposition of the set A, where each subset lies in one u tilde m. Okay, so these are the assumptions of the proposition, and now the claim of it is that 1 and 2 are also satisfied for this new atlas. So this means if we take a new decomposition, everything works as before. 
In particular, all the integrals exist and we can form the integral of omega with the infinite sum again. And this is the important result. We have the equality for both formulations. More concretely, we can form the integral with respect to h tilde and a tilde. And this is exactly the same number as given with our original description with hk and ak. Okay, so there we have it. If we change the decomposition, and of course everything has to be done with measurable sets, then we don't change the whole integral. And now you see, this statement justifies that we can simply write integral of omega over a. Okay, so this was already a lot of work, but the proof is not so complicated here. Simply because we already have the correct picture in mind. Namely, we can just combine both decompositions into a third one. If I put the one over the other, we get out a decomposition with even smaller sets. Indeed, these are all the intersections. For example, this set here is a1 intersected with a2 tilde. Indeed, we still have a countable decomposition with measurable sets. And now you should see the advantage of this new decomposition because we can calculate this integral with respect to the one atlas and with respect to the other one. This means we can put this intersection into h tilde m and into hk. Hence, for the single integral, we can immediately write down the equality. So here on the left, we have the integral in Rn with respect to hk. And on the right hand side, we have the integral in Rn with respect to h tilde m. In other words, it's the same integral just with respect to a different chart. And there we have shown in part 40 that the value of the integral is the same no matter which chart we choose. And of course, the same proof holds if we consider the absolute value of our component function here. And now you should already see what we have to do for the rest of the proof is just to sum up all these values. So let's start using the sum with the index m. Then we don't change so much. We still have the equality, but we can simplify the left hand side. Namely, we go through all possible intersections of the set AK with the sets A tilde M. The conclusion is that instead of the sum, we can write a union at the integral. We have the union of the images where M goes through all possible values. And now it's not hard to see that this is actually the whole image of AK. And there we have it. The left hand side is an integral we already know and we know it's finite. And at this point you can already see the whole idea. At the next step we can use the sum with respect to the index K. It's the same idea as before. By assumption we know that the left hand side is finite. Hence the double sum on the right hand side is also a finite number. In fact, to get this, we just use the usual things for integration in Rn. And now in the end, on the right hand side, we will do a similar thing as we have done it on the left hand side, namely, we push a sum into the integral. Or more precisely, we will use the sum with the k index to rewrite this image. Indeed, we have the union and then we get out the whole image of the set a tilde m. And now you see, this is exactly what we wanted to get. Now we know that this integral and the whole sum here is finite as well. So the first and the second property for our second decomposition also hold. And exactly this justifies that we can do the same calculation as before, just without the absolute value. And then you should see that we have proven that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. And this is what we have stated in the proposition. It does not matter which decomposition we choose, we get out the same value. And there we have it. The proof is finished and the integral is well defined. And with that I would say it's good enough for today. 
let's continue the discussion about integrals on manifolds with the next videos. So have a nice day and bye bye.